want to buy some high performance threads, follow me. What's your minimum specification? This is the Magnetar. The Magnetar X64T. This is the last system you'll ever need for about the next 10 years, probably. This system is special because it runs all 64 cores, it's 128 threads at 4 gigahertz, always and forever. That is insane. This is a pre-overclocked system build from a company called Amari, and I've been testing it. This is really fun. So this is the Magnetar. Liquid cooled, pre-overclocked, comes with these funky handles, and this is a system that costs as little as 14,000 US dollars. Inside, AMD's Threadripper 3990X and an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. So what you can see here is the system. Now, it doesn't look like much, I'll grant you that. All we can see here is a big radiator, there's a pump in the bottom right, and there's that graphics card. Oh, and there's something ASRock down below. Now this is where all the secret sauce is. If we open this up, we've got some liquid cooling solutions, Coolstream CE. That's a three by 140 mil triple length radiator with three EK fans. And inside, ooh, fancy. That is a custom EKWB monoblock that covers the CPU and the VRM. We've got eight sticks of memory totaling 256 gigs. There's a small fan here to cool the VR uh, to cool the memory. And then we move on and we see the Nasrock Tai Chi board. And this thing here, this is a Hyperquad M.2. This holds three. Corsair MP600 one terabyte drives. These are three PCI 4x4 four four drives, and this constitutes a storage. And if we go over here, we see a radiator and a pump. What do you think, Kitty? Hey? Wow, yes indeed. Now this is a custom chassis built by the company Armari for the Magnetar system, or Magnetar, however you want to pronounce it. With some buttons and connectors on the top. And then standard back of the machine elements here. You've got Wi-Fi 6, there's a 2.5 gig ethernet port on the back and a 1 gig ethernet point at the back, plenty of USB 3, and then standard Quadro outputs. Down here is a 1600 watt 93% 80 plus gold power supply that's custom for this system. Armari has worked with o ODMs in order to get the custom fan profile so it doesn't spin below 40% power use and efficient components. Not only that, there are nine PCIe 6 8 pin connectors so this thing is designed to run with a lot of juice. Now, we've tested this system. It's fast, it's bleeding fast. So just to set the scene here, Amari is a system integrator based here in the UK. They see themselves between the, you know, the tier one OEMs, you know, the HPs and the Dells, and the more sort of mainstream pre-built uh, retailer market like Scan and Overclockers. Uh, their expertise is in building highly powerful uh, CPU and GPU based compute systems. Um, the Magnetar the X64T is designed for raw CPU compute. Um, Amari has plenty of customers in the visual effects area, but their systems also go into, say, medical imaging and rapid prototyping, oil and gas, financial, that sort of market. It's people who really need compute. 
And the goal with this um, this Magnetar X64T project was to build the best workstation available on the market. Now, the launch today, or the announcement today, that Amari is making in conjunction with AMD is that they have broken the spec Workstation 3 world record. The previous record owner was a Fujitsu dual Intel uh, Xeon H276 system, so it's two 28 core chips uh, with an RTX 8000. What Amari have managed to do with the Magnetar X64T is destroy that result by about 37% by using a single 3990X custom liquid cooling that can... Uh, withstand up to 700 watts of power and paired that with the uh, Quadro RTX 6000 where the Fujitsu system had the RTX 8000. Uh, so the goal here was when we've got those dual 8276 chips which are like base 2.2 gigahertz and if you loaded up all the cores maybe they'll do about 2425, this CPU can do 4 gigahertz sustained, anywhere from about 3.9 to 4.1, depending on whether it's an integer or a floating point workload. And it can do that day in, day out for a system that you can just put under your desk. I mean, this is it's a workstation, right? These are the systems that people have on the side of their desk or on the ground, and it's just run and forget. And again, with all the performance, it's all about prototyping, rendering as quickly as possible, checking to make sure there's an error if it's even a scientific simulation. It's just going through the motions with a system which is right here rather than, say, plugged into a data center somewhere and you've got to transfer all the data over. It's just here and it just works. Now, benchmarks that I ran on this system, as you might imagine, Spec Workstation 3, we managed to validate Amari, Amari's results and they're all perfectly valid. Um, we even compared it to a W3175X with an RTX 2080 Ti in it, and that did terrible by comparison. Um, versus a standard, say, 3990X, um, just on its own, we saw, you know, in the region of a 50 to 60 percent markup. That was uh, our system was using a 2080 Super, so there's a bit of graphics difference in there, um, but it still is a sizable speed up. Now. This system, running workloads are where it's king. So let's look at a few results. We have something like a, a Blender workload. Um, Blender, very popular in the visual effects scene in animation. And we have a standard test based on the latest 2.83 you know, image that is used to promote that version of Blender. Um, and we got a 32% speed up. Um, Corona Renderer, another 28% speed up. V-Ray, 30% speed up. Something like Cinebench. Um, you know, and I know some people like to go and say, well, Cinebench isn't a realistic workload. Well, we got a 30% speed up. And based on all the other rendering workloads, you know, we're seeing 30 to 35% speed up. Now, have you ever seen Cinebench complete in about 16 seconds? Well, here you go. Now, with the screen recording, that was about 29,500 points. Um, for the benchmark run, I think I got about 30,500 on average, and the peak score was about 31,000. Now, if you plug that into HWBot, the Overclocking World Record database, uh, you automatically become 16th for a system that you can buy off the shelf. That's 16th in the world for any system running Cinebench R20. That is crazy if you run cinebench r15 you get 12th yeah it's it's insane now this system not only just rendering we've also got other workloads um so aes encoding um that was about a 25 percent speed up um some of the more uh programs that run real world workloads um for example i've got a 2d to 3d imaging workload um which takes you know a bunch of you know 4k or 12 megapixel uh, images, 2D images, and you take it around the object that you want a model of, and it just creates a model out of that. That's a four-stage algorithm with some single thread and multi-thread and some memory requirements. Um, that didn't get much speed up over the stock 3990X. 
Um, I think, you know, we saw about 20 seconds in a 20 minute benchmark. Uh, the one thing where this system collapse does, doesn't perform as well on, um, is the fact that it doesn't have AVX512. So any Intel system with AVX512, um, that's obviously going to cane it. And we can see that. Uh, those things like molecular modeling, we also saw a minor speed up. Um, also, uh, brain simulation, um, as a minor speed up. These sorts of benchmarks are memory, more memory intensive than, say, compute intensive. Um, and if there's one thing I have to pin down this system on is the fact that um, the 39 Threadripper 3990X is only a quad channel memory system. So you've got four channels of DDR4 3200 at stock speed, which if you do the math is about 101 gigabytes per second uh, theoretical maximum. In realistic workloads, you probably get about 85 gigabytes per second. Um, but with some of these workloads where you're putting 64 cores, 128 threads through, if you've only got 85 gigabytes per second, that means your bandwidth per thread is less than one gigabyte a second, and that's not enough. Um, ideally, you want, say, AMD's Threadripper Pro, which was announced recently, that has eight channels that you can run at DDR4 3200. The only problem is those CPUs aren't overclockable. So, I mean, the whole point of this Magnetar system is the overclockingness. Um, and if you took that away, then you could just, you know, any Threadripper Pro system stock speed would perform, you know, similarly. So um, you lose the soul, essentially, of the system if you've got rid of the overclocking. What we need is that 64-core overclocking chip that can also do 8-channel memory, and this thing would fly in those sorts of workloads. Now you're probably wondering, power consumption, temperatures, noise, right? A system that's pulling 64 cores at 4 gigahertz all the time got to be consuming a lot of power. Now, as I said before, that cooling, the custom cooling loop from uh, Armari is good for about 700 watts. Um, they claim it's you know better than uh, at least two to three, two or three x better than any all-in-one Threadripper liquid cooler. Um, they've got a custom efficient pump design in there, along with that massive radiator. So when we put on the workloads, um, now I'm going to differentiate here between, say, integer workloads, like a pure math workload, um, say, for example, Y Cruncher, versus a floating point workload, which is more, say, um, particle movement or oil and gas or what have you. So in those integer workloads, we're seeing a peak of about 450 watts CPU power. Uh, in those floating point workloads where we're you know ramping up the AVX2 units in FP32 mode, we're seeing actually 650 watts being consumed. Now, given that the base TDP for this chip is 280 watts, yeah, you're starting you know two to three x more power depending on the workload, and that's even if it's a sustained workload. Now, for that two to three x more power, um, depending exactly on the workload, you're getting you know anywhere from 25 to 30 percent to 35 percent extra performance. In the spec workstation um, benchmark, we're actually seeing more numbers in sort of the 80 to 100% range, because um, that's also involving the GPU as well. Now, we also ran a benchmark um, with the GPU involved, uh, it's a benchmark called Tea Render or Thea Render, um, and it, it's it's a global illumination samples per pixel type calculation, and it can use a CPU and a GPU simultaneously. So with that, we piled through the workload and the power draw on the system, the full system at the wall, 1,187 watts peak. That's quite a lot. If you've got that system under your desk as a workstation in a small office, I mean, a small office here, it's going to warm up the room pretty quickly. Um, that's the sort of workloads that you're going to need to be in an open uh, in an air conditioned office or in an open plan office although with the current situation good luck in getting an open plan office um yeah it it just pumping out heat is something to be wary of now in terms of thermals on the processor um when we were just doing uh, the integer workload the one that you know hit 450 watts you know we were seeing 82 degrees celsius sustained with the floating point workload, we were seeing you know, 89 degrees Celsius sustained. Um, with that peak, you know, 1100 watt workload for the whole system, uh, the CPU kind of topped out about 96 degrees. Um, same again with uh, Blender 4K, uh, Blender 8K workload even. Um, you know, and it sustained over 10 minutes. We saw the frequency go from about 4 gigahertz all core 
you know, slowly down to about 3.9, 3.85 gigahertz, and it just stayed at 3.85 gigahertz the whole way. When it comes to noise, now during idle, uh, using a um, an audio meter, we got 36 decibels. Uh, when the system was powered on with the you know the FP or the integer workflow to the 450, 650, we were going anywhere from say 45 decibels, 49 decibels on the low end, um, which you know is like quiet library. And even if it's you know just to the side, you'll hear it, but you won't really hear it, especially if you've got you know music on. Um, with the higher workloads, we were seeing, you know, somewhere in the 52 decibel range. It wasn't until I actually applied that CPU and GPU render at the same time where the fans actually kicked into a proper full performance. And I was hitting, you know, 56 decibels, which for a massive system like that is amazingly quiet. I've got the W3175X system that Intel sampled when that came out down here. And when that's going in full pelt, you just don't want to be within earshot. In here, in this box, actually, is a server with the Core i9 um, 9990XE. That's the 14 core 5 gigahertz chip that Intel sold at auction only. Uh, that is 85 decibels. Easy. You just don't want to be on in the same building when that is on, or you need that in a data center. That was fun testing that system. But ultimately, the Almari uh, X64T Magnetar system is designed so you can just go ahead and buy it. Um, the system that I tested was uh, 10,790 pounds uh, minus tax, without tax, and that's a special price for anyone who orders it in September. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many of my YouTube audience would be interested in that sort of thing. Uh, current availability in the US is ending. They're currently talking to a few distributors, and they're actually going to announce a... Um, or release later in the year a 2U similar sort of you know overclocked Threadripper design uh, built for you know a server server rack with uh, I IPMI uh, you know with like a tie-in motherboard or something they they're going custom with that and the reason they're doing that is because they've got demand from these visual effects warehouses who just want to replace all their rendering racks with overclocked Threadrippers and that's going to be insane and. Like I say, some of those are based in London, and if I get a chance, I'm going to go over there and see what's going on. Now, I, I'm probably a, a sucker for performance, right? Part of my history has always been in computing performance, getting work done as quickly as possible so we can move on to the next project and more money. Whether it was in my PhD, just sampling, going through all those simulations, you know, trying to reduce simulations that would have gone on for months down to minutes, or in my extreme overclocking past, the goal was to get, you know, the best perform best frequency and performance out of a system that you can get for those 10 minutes that the benchmark is running. It's performance performance. Today, not so much performance. Um, you know, as as a journalist, as a reviewer, it's all about, you know, how much can I test at once, what's the right project? But that thirst for perform that thirst for peak performance and sustained performance is still within me. And that's what the Armari system provides. If you've liked this content, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a message. And what's your minimum specification? Uh, his YouTube channel is Tech Tech Potato. Uh, he recently leveled up his thumbnail game and he went from doing like 800 views a video to like 8,000 views a video. Nice. And cool. Yeah, yeah. See, he's. <laughs> yeah, they all they all give in in the end. Do you see? Uh... <laughs> what do you think, Kitty? Hey? Wow, yes indeed.